Get it past that nipple. And give it a shot here. Again, holding on and scraping, scraping action. Um, and as I get into it, I really push. Just a cheap little garden shovel I bought the other day at a store there in Homer's. It cost me all four or five bucks. And I sharpened the end of it. Well, sharper than a butter knife, but not. If I slip, it doesn't cut. So that's where I want it. I don't want to slip and have it tear the hide. I tried using a little bit like a pounder but I find this to be more successful I can even kind of get it in it and push up tried a few different techniques but nothing seems to work as good as this Back to my nail here. Just poke her in there. I like a little bit longer nail. Makes it easier to, again, be able to put my finger in there and have something really firm to pull on. I've tried the, um, I tried a cradle here a few weeks ago and my thought was with the cradle I wasn't gonna be able to rotate down and around the beaver as far with it in the cradle as without, as long as I had the, I could see if I didn't have the nails, it would be an advantage to have, but it was not, it was not an advantage um, to me if I had the wires. So right here, I'm sticking my finger into there, going back and trimming that down. Now you're going to break through here relatively soon on this side. There it is there. So now as I work my way back, we're just about got her licked. Go ahead and get through this spot there. My dad taught me this nail trick. I just always figured that's what everybody did, but I don't know that I've ever talked to anybody that's used it. I've turned a few people onto it, but um, I really suggest that you try it if you haven't. Even if you're a cradle user, it still allows you to um, be able to pull on that hide. And a tight hide is by far much easier to skin and work with than a limp hide that you're going to have if you can't be pulling on that beaver. Pulling on that beaver is the key for me. Everybody has a different technique, but I'm totally lost without it. A little lump like that, I just go back and clean it up with my finger. You hear that scraping, two and three licks in a spot at times, making sure. A lot of times when you come back to the part that you finished on your side, there'll be a little ridge left over there. So you gotta clean that up sometimes, more than others. Okay, that bad boys. I don't like to use my skin and knife around the head because Invariably, you will dull your knife. 
again, I'm going to skin on my finger a little bit there, get that just a little bit cleaner. Go ahead and flop him over. And again, I'm going to clip that nail in. Now I can pull. That beaver's not going anywhere. And now. Uh, on now. Should come in around 20, 20 minutes or so, which for a clean skinned good side beaver just not too bad. I've rough skinned them in under five, but I spent most of my life Clean skinning for sure. Done. Let's see what we got. Stop. 18, almost 19 minutes. Um, you can see it there. 18 to 49. And then just go ahead and lay that beaver out there a little bit. Get a look at it. Now you'll notice there's a little. There's a little fat here and there, a little red meat. This is the flesher. I would typically do this on the board, but I'll show you how it'll work here. Um, picking up that. Stiff armed. You see it takes that red meat right off there, even on this big beaver. Scrapes it down. Got a little on your legs, you can just roll right over the leg hole. See how it just pulls it right off there. You could even turn it around if you wanted to and go the other way. Look at the back end, it's pretty clean. There's a little bit here and there, but you're not going to find um, too much better than that on average. You see that grease, getting that grease out of there. There's nothing that needs shaving off. All of it can be pushed. Anything that's on there. And like I say, this would be much easier once he's stretched out. But he's going in the freezer for now, so. That beaver's ready to hoop right there. Or board, whatever you're heart desires. All that subcutaneous fat and oils is um, good stuff to be getting out of there. You could go ahead and trim up that nose fat and such if you wanted. I'm not too worried about it. Again, when he gets some um, stretched out, would be the oh, that's a nice place for it. Stretched out would be the time to fool with that. Although it's coming off pretty good there. Beaver is done. I was going to show you this flesher. It's just um, a typical um, flat handle that are like seven bucks. You can get them from places like Minnesota or any of your major trapping 
I just took, um, it's kind of locked in there now, but that's just a, a round, something I turn on the lathe. But a um, piece of dowel rod or anything, and I just took a saw and cut a kerf in there and kind of jammed it into that top blade. It's just sitting in there, it's not glued in or anything. But having that ability to be able to push, having my front secured and be able to push with a straight arm, lots of leverage there. Um, not particularly sharp. This actually could be even a little sharper. Um, great tool. Fox, coyotes, cats, um, parts of an otter. Um, just about everything. For pushing easy fat and some meat off. It's not, not going to cut a lot off, but it's a great pushing blade. Anyway, thanks for your time.